Okay, hi everybody. This is Sherry and Beverly with Aging Backwards. Hi, Bev. Oh, we are here. What do we got going today, Beverly? We have a wonderful topic today. It is all about oils. So let me see if I can successfully share a screen so we can get the presentation up. You can. I have faith in you. <laughs> I'm glad you do. Thank you. <laughs> so, is it showing? <laughs> yeah, you're fine. You're okay, fine. so this is our backdrop, Aging Backwards with Sherry and Beverly. So we have our coaches page. So Sherry, I will let you introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Sherry Lynn. I'm a culinary nutrition expert and educator and a certified consistency coach at Sherry Lynn Inc. I'm also the founder of The Exhaustion Fix. I help exhausted, busy women learn how to eat to help put their hormones in check so that they can start to feel awake again and get back into those genes in the back of their closet. Awesome, those hormones will definitely be a game changer to get back into those genes, I tell you. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, hi, everyone. I am Beverly. I am a certified health and wellness coach. My company is Beverly Hills Health and Wellness Coaching. I've coached clients who have lost up to 50 pounds in the course of one year. I specialize in working with women to elegantly transform menopause through my holistic program online, individually, and in group settings. So you can step into your dazzling health. Very cool. So we are here to support you in coaching. So we have a disclaimer. So I am covering oil. So Sherry, I'll let you jump into the disclaimer. Okay. This information is for educational and informational purposes only and solely as a self-help tool for your own use. We're not providing medical, psychological, or nutrition therapy advice. You should not use this information to diagnose or treat any health problems or illnesses without consulting your own medical pr practitioner. Always seek the advice of your own medical practitioner and or mental health provider about your specific health situation. And if you want to look at the full disclaimer, we have the um, URL there for you to do that. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sherry. I appreciate that. You are welcome. Okay, so the topic today is all about oils. I have spent so much time researching so I can come to you with the best information on oils. I'd like to say first and foremost that the topic of oils in certain areas seems to be a bit controversial, not across the board, all organizations and industries seem to agree our purpose is to have a conversation around the oils, what we found. We also have a page indicating the resources. And so it can provide you information to make the best choices on these oils based on your um, health goals or any special dietary um, concerns that you're following. Um, Sherry is a nutritionist, so I had to get the thumbs up from Sherry to make sure we were providing you with the best information on oils. And even she has some questions that we discussed around oils. So we'll just take them. This is not a comprehensive list about all factors pertaining to oils, but these are the top ones. So before I jump in, Sherry, do you want to have anything to share? as the nutritionist so we can make sure we off on a good foot? Well, with any information that you get, you want to you know, keep your goals in mind and take the information and choose what you want to do with that information for your goals. You know, like just because I like a certain thing doesn't mean that Beverly likes it as much as I do. Mm -hmm. You know, you might cook with a different oil more than I do and, uh, you know, keep in mind, what, what are your goals? Mm -hmm. Maybe you have, um, you're a heavy lifter, you need more of something, or you're a runner and you don't, or maybe you're um, vegan and you don't want yes. some of the options that we're, I'm, so I'm just saying, you know, take the information and do with it what, what you would with any other information. Right, and everybody's body's different, so mm -hmm. keep that in mind. So 
we will jump right in. The first one is saturated fats. We're going to do a little show and tell as we're going through these. Um, saturated fats are those that are mostly animal-based. These are the ones that get solid after they've been sitting into a space. I have to say that one of my go-to is coconut oil. And I was sharing with um, Sherry that usually you should place your oils in a cool, dark place because oils can go bad, they can go rancid. Um, as you see, we're in my kitchen here, and we have a tendency to have our oils right up above the, the um, oven there. So it makes it easy to access, but it also can change the consistency of the oil. So I'm going to show you my, this is my coconut oil. And as you can see, it's in a liquid form because I've had it in such a warm spot. But normally, if I didn't have it in that spot, it would be all mm -hmm. solid and it would be white. So these are your saturated fats. Do you have a space that you keep your special oils, Sherry? I actually have mine out on the counter by my stove. And that's one thing is we, we tend to keep them where we do more of the cooking and things. Whereas a lot of the newer houses have pantries now that they're, they're dark, they're cool, they're, you know, probably where they should be, but then that's over there. And we tend to put them above the stove or like my olive oils usually just right out on my counter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and my coconut oil, actually. Yeah. The one, in, oh, I know the, the MCT my coconut oil is my MCT oil. So if you hear of somebody's on MCT oil, what is that? Well, it's my coconut oil. And I have this one on my counter as well, because it goes into my coffee in the morning. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like the bulletproof coffee. Yes. Yeah. The, the medium um, chain triglyceride that's right that's right yep. yes mm -hmm. perfect yeah that'll keep you satiated and keep you going okay so we're going to talk about the unsaturated oils and these are plant-based um they're definitely liquid at room temperature um this is one of my go-to this is olive oil and as you can probably see that it is definitely a liquid form it is one of the ones that are your healthier fats. I absolutely love the avocado oil. I use it for sauteing just a little bit and also like will drizzle it over my salad. Do you have any? So yeah, I, was I have the kind of share. Simply Organic. I know it's probably bright in here. Um, I like to use the olive oil and balsamic on my salads. Mm -hmm. And when we get to the avocado oil, I'll discuss my new find with my salad dressings. Yeah, that's a big one for Sharon because avocados is one of those that she's like, oh, I'm working on it, I'm working on it. <laughs> no avocado, no avocado, big red X. Okay, so. so then there's two other types of oil. There's your polyunsaturated oil. This is like your essential fats that your body doesn't make. And this is found in fishes and nuts and seeds. And Sherry was saying her favorite fatty fish was the salmon. I equally enjoy salmon, but you also have to keep in mind the type of salmon make sure it's like wild caught. So you're reaping the benefits of having that fish cooked in the nice oil that won't you know, overpower the flavor of it. So it's really important to use the appropriate types of oils in cooking your foods to make the healthiest mm -hmm. version of what you need for your goals health-wise. Mm -hmm. Well, and then too with the salmon, Beverly, if you want to make like a, you know, like even like if you had like tuna salad or you can use the avocado mayo, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, you've, it's a good healthy fat for you. And I take the salmon and I do the same thing or I buy the the wild canned salmon, mm -hmm. if I haven't baked any or if I don't have. So that's really simple for me, especially for a quick lunch. Yes, absolutely. You know, and then I put that on my salad or, and then this is the one I wanted to show. The Primal Kitchens has all of these different salad dressings. This one's Green Goddess. It's avocado oil with marinade and it's delicious. Yes. And like Beverly said, 
I joke all the time because other people love <laughs> avocado and I'm that one that I have to hide it in things to get my healthy fat out of it. Cause I know to eat it. And like Beverly is like, you got to find a way to, to get that in your diet. And this is my way. Yeah. You know? So you know, I try really to sneak it in, in the mayo and the salad dressing. Right. And then your holy guacamole little. Yes. Snackable. The, the little snack size, holy guacamole is another way that I try. So we all try. Yeah. And it's like, that's the thing about it. You know, once you have the information, make the steps to make the change. It's just one little small change can mm -hmm. be the catapult to the next change, the next thing. Then you have a totally different outcome. So just with understanding the use of your oils, you can make better choices and have an outcome to um, foster the best health possible. And that's the purpose of us doing what we do here. Um, there are people who are chefs and they can talk about these oils to a much greater extent, but that's not what we're trying to do. We're just trying to give you the basics. So if you're looking to be healthy, that's what we're here to do. We want you to be healthy. Exactly. And and you lose the weight. <laughs> yeah. And, and if we like give a suggestion or like a, a product that we show you, try it. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes we're afraid to try new things. And I, I know sometimes like, I don't want to, you know, like maybe there's something and I, Oh, you know, like coconut oil costs a little bit more, but it's so much healthier for you. And like Beverly, Beverly said, it's going to keep you satiated, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? So don't look at the price and let it outweigh your health because there's nothing more important than your health Correct. and you're in charge of it. Yeah. And We're we've all talked about charge. this before, like you're going to pay one way or the other, pay on the front end, buying better quality oils, or you're going mm -hmm. to pay on the other end that you sacrificed and bought quality uh, oils that were not of the best quality and maybe end up with some cholesterol problems. And then you're going to the doctor in that time and the cost of the medication. So you're going to pay. So one of the purposes of doing these types of presentations is bringing you the items where you can actually see, you can get some firsthand um, reference on our experience with it. So you don't have to be you know, spending this money and not sure of the outcome. I can attest to you everything that you see that I will show you, we use. And mm -hmm. it's been trial and error. Mm -hmm. it, it is trial and error. And you try one thing and then you, you're like, okay, now I'm going to move to the next thing. And then now what else can I do? Okay, I didn't like that. Okay, well, how can I replace that? And you really need to replace something with something else mm -hmm. to make a change in that habit. Right. You can't just say, I'm going to do this and go, oh, how come that didn't work? Yes. Yes. You know, you have to replace it mm -hmm. with yeah. something, a better choice. Mm -hmm. So this for that, yes. mm -hmm. this or that. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's, I think that there's a couple of uh, challenges that we had swap this for that, you know, going through different things in the course of a week. So mm -hmm. example, like if you're a rice eater, swap the rice for cauliflower. So that's the reference mm -hmm. there like this for that okay right. so moving along there's your mono unsaturated fat this is typically a lip liquid that at room temperature is you know fluid but then it starts to turn into a solid if it's chilled mm -hmm. the trans fat this is one that was in the news several years ago and a lot of controversy when people found out what was happening with their fats. This is a process that companies were used by adding hydrogen to this liquid vegetable oil and making it unhealthy. And I think there was a big issue about some potato chips that companies were making that some people were starting to get sick because they were trying to do these inexpensive oil processes and cook these chips and people were actually getting sick behind them. Um, I also indicated a couple of other areas where 
You may see these, but by and large, most of them are supposed to be off of the market and you shouldn't find them in mass like they were at one point. Um, I know your cereals are a concern whenever you're buying cereals, if, especially having children, look at your packaging and make sure that there's no trans fats that are located or there or the ph is the partially hydrogenated oils that's what that stands for look on your packaging is so important to see what you're consuming um, microwave popcorn was one of my go-to snacks and i actually was freaked out after learning more about popcorn um, most of our corn is gmo um, the corn itself is not the best quality when it's gmo um, the packaging internal of the microwave bags has some foil or sealant that when warmed up in the microwave can also be toxic. So that was enough to just scare me away from microwave popcorn. So I just don't do microwave popcorn, not even knowing all of the concerns about the trans fats at the time. Um, your chips and crackers, not across the board, but just watch your packaging, your creamers and your pizzas. Just make sure that those oils are not contained when they're, because they are hazardous to your health. The, the one thing that I'll add on to there, Bev, for this section is when it comes to the cereals and the popcorn, the corn, the crackers, the chips, the that's when I go organic. Mm -hmm. The organic blue corn tortilla chips, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. organic popcorn, the organic cereals. The popcorn, oh, my popcorn story is I got two bags of baby hulled organic popcorn okay. from my farm share. Okay. And so I gave my dad one and my dad is 83 years old. He only has so many teeth left. They, he's outgrown them. Mm -hmm. Like that's what the dentist said. You've outgrown your teeth. They're, they started to fall out. Okay. And he's not at that point now where he's going to get dentures. So Dentist. the popcorn without the hull, I thought he could eat. Okay. Yeah. So it's like this baby popcorn. And mm -hmm. so he puts it in the air popper uh -huh. and it's flying everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. And uh, it's, he's like, Sherry, that did not work. And I'm like, oh, shoot, you know, I'm like, I tried to do a good thing and it backfired <laughs> on me. So I'm like, okay. So I said, well, dad, you could put a pan on the stove the way we used to put some oil in there, you know, and shake it up and put uh -huh. the cover on. And yeah, I could do that. But then I got to thinking and I, I thought, well, mom and I used to make popcorn in the microwave, not the microwave popcorn you're talking about. And I'm like, all right, Sherry's going to experiment in the kitchen again. <laughs> so I took my paper bag. Okay. It was a clean, it was a clean paper bag that I had a loaf of bread from the bakery come in. So it wasn't okay. like it was germed up in the, okay. it was a cleaner paper bag, if there's such a thing. So I stirred up some of my popcorn with the hulls or without the hulls and uh, put a little oil in there. Okay. And you fold it over and you stick it in the microwave. Okay. And it pops just the same like that microwave popcorn with oh, all, really? all of that stuff in it. Yeah. Oh. And on, your, on most microwaves, you've got the little popcorn button. Yes, correct. So, so dad tried it without the oil. He's like, oh, it's kind of dry. I said, well, dad, I mixed in a little olive oil with mine. I don't know what the temperature of the microwave and the zapping mm -hmm. does to the olive oil with all the, I never got into that. Don't care. But anyway, <laughs> I don't. But Anyway, it worked. I had that to use up. Good to know. Yeah, so we had to use these, and and you know we couldn't use the pan on the stove, but we didn't. Mm -hmm, I said, Dad, mm -hmm. remember when Mom used to do that? She used to make caramel corn in the microwave all the time, in the paper bag back in when I was in high school, and you know it was a, something to to try, and you know made me think of Mom. I'm like, oh, something I learned back in the day. Well, that is such a great thing to know because in my mind, I'm always thinking microwave popcorn is this pre-processed in the bag commercial version. But if you can do your own, like you've gotten your popcorn probably from a local 
farmer, which is mm -hmm. hopefully it not was. GMO. So you had an organic bag of popcorn that you were able to have your dad to enjoy. So that's awesome. Well, in the bag, the paper bag is going to be greasy. It's going to have grease spots. Yeah, but you, know, you use the commercial version. They're the same way. Yeah. So, so just, just know that. And actually, like after a couple of minutes, I open it up, shake it up a little bit, put it back in there, you know, and then watch it because there's nothing worse than burnt popcorn. Oh, yeah. Permeates. You know? it's the, the if falls, you're not hearing the pop, 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 <laughs> once you stop and hearing it, done. you better open it. So. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Well, thanks for that share, everybody. We have some options here. See, you learn all kinds of things when you check out things that we're covering in our videos. <laughs> yeah, experiment. <laughs> yeah, it's trial and error, like we said. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just going to jump on the last two. Um, olive oil is my absolute go-to, which I didn't put my, I, I normally have a big like gallon container of olive oil, but I always take it and put it in my little decorative container. So you can see there that it's like liquid form. Love this olive oil. Oh my God. This is like my treasure. And um, we also have this olive oil here in like a spray pump bottle. So like if you're just wanting to spritz your pan down a little bit with like a light oil, that's another option too. Um, one of the references that people look for when they're buying their olive oil is where it says extra virgin olive oil. Mm -hmm. And they were, sometimes you'll see it in brackets like EVOO. And I think that was coined by Rachel Ray when she used to do her cooking shows back in the day, EVOO. Oh, okay. Yeah, extra virgin olive oil. So well, and, we, go ahead. Mm -hmm. But extra virgin, virgin olive oil, it just means that it's made from the first pressing of the olives. Mm -hmm. So it's the extra virgin. Mm -hmm. So I just and wanted to add that. Of the, of the, um, that's the cold press and also the extra virgin has to do with the quality of the olives too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so um, I actually did a little deep dive in one of the um, olive, publications so olive olive oil making publications and one of the things that was in a recent article i think as of like august like 2020 it indicated that cold press is an outdated term that's still being used to refer to the first press of the olive to get the best aromatic flavor of the olive but actually that process was quite dated now that they're using the centrifuge process, which is like much more electronic and there's a spin process to extract the same highest level of, of aroma and flavor from the olive. So just a little tidbit of information I found out because I was like always looking for my olive oil, it's a extra virgin olive oil of cold press. So just keep that in mind that it doesn't necessarily have to. Well, it, and that's what you looked for. I mean, that's what, yes. that's what we looked for when we went to the store, mm -hmm. you know, you're in DC and I'm in Wisconsin and we both, you know, knew to do that. And mm -hmm. yeah, interesting. Yeah. Very, very insightful for me to find that out. So anyway, yeah. like if you think about it, like back in the day, they were grinding these um, olives in some type of antiquated grist meal process. I'm thinking, and here we are in the you know, 2020s and everything is so electronic AI. So, you know, that they're not doing it the same way that they did back in those days. Right. And the last thing that I wanted to point out was smoke point and flash point. This was a eye opener for me. I am one of those people like to be in the kitchen and out as quickly as possible. And I'm the person that would put the oil, this is before my research and my knowledge and certification as a health and wellness person, but I would put the oil in a pan and I would crank that fire up as high as it would go so I could cook what I need to cook quickly. <laughs> oh, and years past, I've understood that that is the most dangerous thing that you can do. One, it could possibly start a fire. Two, it totally taints and changes the structure of your oil. Certain mm -hmm. oils are made to have smoke points that can have higher heat 
and certain oils have to have low heat. If you get an oil so hot that it's beyond the required temperature, it will generate these free radicals, which are dangerous and it impacts your health. So Sherry, you have anything to share on the smoke point? We're gonna do one more sure. and have some examples. The like smoke point for extra virgin olive oil is 320 degrees. Whereas it's virgin olive oil, you can go up to 420. So you have to know a little bit, just, you know, if you don't know something, you can talk to Dr. Google, just look that up <laughs> real quick. That's, it's, it's okay to, to just, look at it and say oh what what is the temperature because above that you're you're looking at a toxicity level yes so you're taking what you think is going to be a good healthy choice mm -hmm. and you're kind of ruining it. ruining it not on purpose you know like you wanted to get done cooking because we're, <laughs> we're busy and we're gosh it's the end of the day and i just want to yes. eat and i want to go sit down because i'm I'm exhausted. Exactly. And I, I just want to, and I'm starving just, you know, and yes. so, yeah. You're correct. And what I try to do is put a sampling of some of the oils that made the list of oils that most people use for their cooking or for their embellishment of flavor. Um, we had talked about the olive oil here it can take a higher flash point. The heat source can be um, much higher than say a olive oil. So just think about what you're cooking and if it's something that you're doing a quick stir fry, you can maybe use up olive oil, but if you're doing something that's gonna require a little more cooking and it's going to be on the fire longer, then consider your um, olive oil and then this is your good healthy fats. So, and I have it broken out in the reference of whether it's monounsaturated or saturated or poly, whatever type of um, fat source. And then I indicate the high, low abedium is your flash point for the oils. So we talked about the olive oil and Sherry indicated that depending on which version of the olive oil can go low to medium. Um, uh -huh. The coconut oil is one that should not be cooked at very high oil. And this was the coconut oil. And uh, actually, this is the, the one that I was showing you initially. And I also have another option. We also do a lot of stir fry, really quick, you know, flip over in the pan and, you know, we're done. And there's a spray coconut oil. Isn't that neat? And there's I a spray that. avocado oil, too. You can have the spray... Spray olive oil, spray avocado, and spray coconut. Yep, yep. there it is. Spray. That's yep. the one my daughter uses. Yep. And I'll tell you one of the great things about the spray oils, too, is that when you're having a salad, mm -hmm. you can spray your salad down with oil. You don't have a lot of that excess oil pooling in your salad bowl. So you can just spray oh. it if you want to. Yep. That's a great yep. idea. Perfect. A lot of times I'll have a bowl of salad and I'll squirt, you know, oils over and kind of turn my leaves over in the plate. And then I'll add my, I have truffle uh, oils and I have truffle vinegar. So that's a treat for me. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a whole nother episode. <laughs> truffle oils. Yes. A, I want to learn more about that got this one when I was in Germany. <laughs> I'm sure you can get it locally, but I happen to be traveling and I'm in a gourmet store. So can you see that? Oh yeah. How beautiful that is. There's a little truffle down in the bottom. Can you see the truffle? Oh really? <laughs> These things awesome. are so pricey too. And this smells so yummy and tastes fantastic and you don't need very much. And this is a fantastic oil. Yeah, with truffle oils, you don't need very much. Mm -mm. It's Just like, Yep, just a little. Yeah, it so. has a very um, distinctive taste to it. And that's why, you know, I've had this for probably six months or something. That's all I've used. It just takes a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it goes a long ways. Yeah, and then there's like the sesame oil. Now, the sesame oil, you'll find like most of your um, oriental restaurants will use that. Um, that usually is not found in cooking a lot, but they add it as a 
glaze over something or a drizzle over something. Mm -hmm. And this is my bottle of sesame oil. If you can see, it is gone. <laughs> <laughs> This is she saved the bottle just for this presentation. No, I just have it upside down <laughs> trying to drain every little bit out of it. I was like, oh, also, next time you go to the store, pick me some up. But this you have to get at the special uh, international market, and he hasn't been in a while. But this I will like drizzle over my food, and this is like such an amazing flavor. Um, this is like hot, you know, I love spicy things. But it just has such a distinctive flavor that you don't even have to worry about, you know, cooking anything. Just drizzle it over top of a salad, drizzle it over top of, you know, your side dish, and it's like fantastic. And it's a good healthy oil for you. And I think that's a good point that you just hit on, Bev, is that when you're eating, you know, like a great salad and great vegetables and you have all that flavor and then you add on a good flavor dressing or sesame oil, you know, like this avocado primal kitchen has good flavor to it. Mm -hmm, and it's got mm -hmm. good stuff in there. So then you're, you're really enjoying it more and you're nourishing your body with right. just good stuff. You're going to feel better. Oh yes, absolutely. And then oh. that cuts down all of your salts that you need, which is not really great for you. It's the natural flavor of the food and with a little zip to it. Like I love it. Yeah, and right now all the by me all of the tomatoes are right. I picked my tomatoes yesterday morning in the garden. My and husband then did too. yes. Did you? Okay. Yes, my, yes, two big bowls full. I'm going to make some soup out of it. Oh, we got the cherries and then we got the big slicers for, you know, BLTs and stuff. And then um my cucumbers didn't really pan out. But I get that farm share and they've got all kinds of cucumbers for me. So I'm like, I don't know why my cucumbers didn't it's been a really odd better. season, but at least you're a part of that uh, community where you can get vegetables from another person who's like mm -hmm. making it available for your entire community. So that's awesome. Yeah, because what I don't put in the garden, I can get from the farm share. And you can swap things out. So mm -hmm. if I don't want tomatoes from them because I have enough, then I can swap it for maybe more cucumbers. And get you some cucumbers. Yeah. And I have zucchini in my garden, so I don't need it from there, so I can get green beans or something else. Oh, yeah, else. my husband got zucchini, too. He's got two different types, and oh. I am going to actually put some of these pictures up of some of the things that came out of his garden. There was this huge white zucchini that looked like a piece of artificial vegetable. Like, it was so perfect. <laughs> it was so, like waxy looking glossy caught the light so beautifully i almost didn't want, want to eat it but when he sauteed it it was fantastic oh really <laughs> yes it, it was huge it was about the size of like a huge potato because usually you see the like little small zucchini type squash but this one it's a special type of squash. i don't know where he got it from but it was fantastic Awesome. We're talking you know, here in the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, I know. Last, last summer when we, dad grabbed, well, dad planted the garden last year. He wouldn't wait for us because it was like really nice weather and it was going to rain and had to get the garden in. And I'm like, why did we were all coming to help? Well, he had to get it in. Uh -huh. Well, when he bought the seeds, his eyesight's not real like good at <laughs> 83. Interesting. Well, he thought he planted like, uh, I don't know, they look like gourds, but they were like some like Chinese cucumber. They were round. I don't even know wow. what, it, but they were good. Wow. We tried them. They well, were good. What, we is, had it, to look what up. is it, trial and error? <laughs> <laughs> but we, we didn't know what it was. I was like, what did you plant? Well, I don't know what I planted. So <laughs> it was a, it was a experiment again, but it was a, it was a mistake, but Hey, we but it turned out to be a good outcome. Yeah, it was kind of fun. What is that? We had to do our research. Well, What's growing awesome. in the garden? Going to add that to his annual planting or? <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. And if um, the other thing on here too, Bev, is the ghee. Don't be afraid yeah. to try ghee. If you can't Love have this. dairy, yes. you can try the ghee. You can cook with it just like you do with butter or yeah see this is like solid see there yep there you go. 
and it, it's a um, butter where they burned off the water and the impurities. So it's just clarified. It's like amazing. It's really good quality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the dairy proteins are skimmed out of it so that if you can't have dairy, then you can have the ghee and you're still going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. There you go. And the other side on the right column is like a vegetable oil, but most of your vegetable oil are blends and they can come in a myriad of processes of blend. So canola, soy palm, sunflower, corn oil, sunflower. Now I know Sherry, you had a concern about one of the specific oils. So I'll let you speak on that. I do not like canola oil. And actually, I don't really like any of those on that side. Um, well, that's why yeah. they're in the blends. They, they're, <laughs> yeah, they're in the blends. I don't care for those. I try to find products without those in them. Right. Um, even sometimes you have like your organic chip or sometimes you'll still, still see an organic canola. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a little bit better, but... You know, you've got a lot of um, not the best quality. Yeah, you got a lot of modified things over there. Mm -hmm. The right. blends and the modified, and you've got yeah. I there's better choices. Let's right. Just say that. One of the things that I wanted to mention was that when you get your fast foods and they're serving up fries. You know, sometimes they're frying chicken. I, I, I mean, I don't know. I don't really do the fast foods anymore. But I know I would see in a distance when I was like frequenting those places, like these huge oral reservoirs, and they would just be throwing one basket of fries in there, pulling it out, throwing the next basket of fries, and they were just doing that. Throughout the whole time that I'm in there waiting on my order and I'm thinking like, oh my gosh, what are we eating if they're using these oils at such high temperatures and they're constantly reusing the oils? Like that's got to be toxic at, at, a, at a point. So you have to think about like when you're getting these meals on the go at these places that are trying to do things quickly that they're not using the best quality of oils and they're reusing these oils at substantially high temperatures so your mm -hmm. value of having good quality food has been substantially diminished by that process right but and when you look at it from a business point of view you're going to do what is economical for you to maintain your business. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And no, I, I love restaurants. Don't get me wrong. They, they're, they're going to use that oil for the fish, for the, like, over and over again mm -hmm, mm -hmm. until it's time to change it. Mm -hmm. They're not going to change the oil more often than they need to. You, it's not a cost-effective way. And mm -hmm. what oil are they going to use, which is going to be cheapest for them, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, so that, right. so do ask questions, right. you know, when you go out to the restaurant, say, what oil do you use? If you're going to get something deep fried, right. I can't tell you that I don't ever get anything deep fried. I do, mm -hmm. you know, that's my thing. If I go out, sometimes I like to try something, mm -hmm. you know, if I'm at home, I'd probably bake it. Cause I don't deep fry at my house, but you know, we're all living. So, well, I concur with you. This is not to beat up on a restaurant industry. I uh -huh. like you enjoy restaurants. I do choose a higher standard of a restaurant when I choose to go out and spend my money. Um, when I was in college, like, you know, fast foods was the way we lived, but I was a totally different, person then based on who mm -hmm. I am today. So I'm going to make choices today to sustain a quality of life and health that I want. Back then, I didn't have as much understanding and knowledge of what 
the quality of foods were producing in my body. And then also the degree of the nutrient nutritional value of foods have changed over, you know, 10, 20 some years. So it's not to say anything against the restaurant, but if you're on a path of good health, these are factors you have to consider if you're choosing to eat at certain locations that this mm -hmm. may not always serve you if you're looking to maintain a good quality food to get the appropriate nutrients and vitamins for your body at whatever stage mm -hmm. of life you're in. Now, I, I can't compromise on that too much. It's vital that I, I have high quality foods, but I'm mm -hmm. in a stage where life is a little different than it was when I was in college. <laughs> Right. And food has changed so much since then. Yes. And the way it's manufactured and the way even um, businesses are run that provide food or even our schools. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'll even mention our schools because everything is shipped in. We don't have the ladies there okay. making it. And Early morning shift. Yeah, a lot of schools don't have that anymore. They mm -hmm. get it. The truck brings it. They warm it up. Mm -hmm. it's not the way it used to be so there's so many different right. changes and right. and we just have to be knowledgeable and mm -hmm. and and keep your goals in mind so your goals now Bev, are different than they were when you were oh my college. gosh yes yes i don't compromise mm -hmm. too much on my food the quality of my food i mean mm -hmm. i think the only time i really kind of go with the flow is when i'm traveling you know i'll bring enough right. with me to make sure I have vitamins to, to augment what I may be eating. But if I'm in a different country, which I traveled, well, had been traveling more so, uh -huh. and I'm going to have to rely on the food on the economy and the way they prepare it and also do what I can to supplement my body's need for other nutrients that I may not be getting there because I'm in a different location. So what is it, when in Rome? <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. You make the best choices with what you have. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And with the knowledge that you have at that time. Correct. Correct. And then when you learn more, then you make better choices with that knowledge that you have. And hopefully everybody who's listening here has learned more and will make better choices. <laughs> yep. I think and we covered everything. And, and Bev, you and I learn from each other as well. Yes. When we're talking and when we're doing these presentations, because, you know, we talk behind the scenes as well. Yes. And we, we put our heads together as to what would be the, you know, the next best webinar for um, our communities. So. Absolutely. And actually, we're going to touch on that in one more slide from this. We kind of wanted to close up with a couple of oils to be cognizant of that they may not be your best choice. But, you know, people make decisions based on, you know, what their health goals are. So I remember I used to have margarine in my house all the time. I used to have shortening for all of these things in my house. Um, now, no. <laughs> No, so just be mindful that mm -hmm. these are like processed um, oils and that they're not the best choice, but if you're looking to make a step, take one and try to switch it to something else. Mm -hmm. So I think that yep. I'm sharing that as best I can without dictating, you know, what you should or should not do. This is just information to help you on your mm -hmm. path to your specific health goals and and i will share that in my house i have real butter yes i have real butter and when i go to dad's house or somewhere else and they don't have real butter i give them a hard time about it mm -hmm. but the uh, margarine story that i have bev is i live in wisconsin and back when margarine was just coming out, mm -hmm. okay, I was, I don't even know if I was born yet, or mm -hmm. I was a little girl. Okay. And my grandfather and his dad 
would go up to Michigan to get the margarine. It was called Oleo, O-L-E-O. So they, you couldn't get it in Wisconsin. So they would hop in the truck and go up to get it in Michigan. Okay. And it came in a plastic bag, you know, kind of like oh, really? enclosed. Yeah, it was margarine. And you, when you went to go use it, you would squish the little yellow dye inside the bag and you'd squish it all up so that it became yellow like your butter. And that's where <laughs> the dye, the, the, the yellow the dye, yellow is, dye what, is toxic. <laughs> yes. But back then, this was the new and improved, oh, margarine. Well, they called it, it was oleo before, I, maybe before it was margarine. I don't know if they were, if those two words can be interchanged or not. Mm -hmm. But oleo, yeah, my, my family talks about how they used to go up to get it. Because wow. you couldn't get it here. And that was like, oh. You know, that was a hot thing. So just because something new comes on the market, don't jump on it. Look what look what they were doing. It was a yellow dye packet. Yeah, because I know that there was a case where the mothers in the U.S. were going up against one of these companies that manufacture kitty macaroni and cheese, and they were putting dyes in it for the coloring that's supposed mm -hmm. to be appealing and it was causing some medical situations that they had tracked it to and they had mm -hmm. to concede and take that out. Whereas over in, I think Europe, they, they, the, that's banned those, those dyes. So yeah, yeah, that's. There are products in Europe that they do not allow that we allow in the U S that's a whole nother episode. Topic. <laughs> yeah. A whole nother but do realize that the some of those dyes and things they put in the food, we wonder why some of the children have the behaviors that they do. You like, would know you're in the school system, so yes. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. And then I do know, like, red number 40 is not my friend. And when I do an intolerance test, I go in and, well, I was doing it once a year because your body changes every year. Mm -hmm. I haven't done it for a couple of years now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but red number 40 and green number three, I got to stay away from them, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. especially red number 40. It, it turns my, it, inflammation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I get a lot of inflammation yeah. if I have something with red 40 and you have to realize that, um, you know, the red is in things that are orange, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, cause how do you make colors to get the color red yeah. and yellow to get the Mix orange together, color right. so yeah so you you don't want the colors well you don't want the prepackaged but you can't always get away from it sometimes yeah. you have it so um it's just something to be thought you know think of is right. you know, when you're putting stuff together for your children or for yourself you know mm -hmm. how many preservatives how many food mm -hmm. dyes are in them mm -hmm. you know my okay. drink that i have my that I think is healthy for me, but it's a blue color. Mm -hmm. What's in it? <laughs> you, know? you really want to know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so. I think that that is so vital, and I'm really glad that you shared that. I mean, there's so much to making sure we're healthy and we make choices based on our understanding of what we're consuming. Mm -hmm. And for those that are here, that's a major gem that you shared. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because awesome. sometimes the, the children have allergies or intolerances that you, it's hard to figure out, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, I cheat and I do a blood test mm -hmm. it, no, rather than trying so elimination good. diets that you can, mm -hmm. You can go bonkers on those too. So, right. well, try to keep the packaged items to a minimal and read your labels and understand, you know, what you're actually consuming. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these goals should be in alignment with what you're hoping to do with your weight loss or, you know, changing your body composition because of hormonal imbalances. Just, you know, take all of this in and, you know, just take baby steps. 
Yep. Baby steps, little steps moving little steps. forward. Okay. Even if it's a snail's pace. It makes a difference. It does. It really yes. does. That's One step at a time. Mm -hmm. So these are the resources where I have gathered my information from. Um, Sherry also as a nutritionist has like looked over everything and gave her stamp of approval on, you know, what we have provided and I hope it has served you very well. We are here to support you in your health journeys if you have any questions let us know if you have topics that you would like us to cover in our videos please drop that in our comments and we would ask you to like share and subscribe to our channel and we appreciate you watching sherry i'll let you jump in and let me know any closing thoughts you might have before we conclude um yeah thanks for watching everybody and if you have anything that you would like us to answer for you we beverly and i love research we love looking up health Absolutely. things and we will jump into any topic health and wellness related especially weight loss mm -hmm. beverly is the menopausal um person to go to and yes. i am the person that deals with the exhaustion fatigue and even the anxiety part of that and you can find me at um, sherry lynn inc my instagram facebook and my free group are listed right there so you can look me up that way or message either one of us if you have any questions so. absolutely i mirror what sherry says i absolutely love research i love the space of wellness and health pertaining to women especially regarding menopause and the hormonal imbalance that is where i actually began to do a deeper dive in understanding what i was eating mm -hmm. the impact that it was help having on my body so i would welcome any questions or support that you need in relation to you know going through the menopause journey it can be a fabulous new life for you but you just have to know some of the ways to navigate through that transitional period so you can reach me my website is beverlyhillscoaching.com i have two facebook groups one that specializes on the menopause and my instagram is there if there's anything we can do sherry and i are here for you please reach out to us and thank you so much for being with us all right thanks everybody see you Bye -bye. Thank you.